The following program has subject matter and language that some viewers may find objectionable. Viewer discretion is advised. struggle with who we are sometimes. This is harder for some than it is for others. More than 90% of all people living with a transgender identity are harassed and abused throughout their lives. Almost half attempt suicide at least once. We wanted to tell a story about what it's like to be transgendered, but there is no one story to tell. Each transgendered person is different each facing their own challenges and celebrating their own triumphs. If we're really honest with ourselves, we all struggle to fit in with our families and with our friends. We don't always know just where we belong. That feeling raises questions and fears that we may not have a place at all. With no positive reflection, how do you learn to like the person you are? This is a story about the journey to find an identity and a place in the world. It's a story about what it means to be human. Meet Sherry, a 72-year-old woman living in a small town in the Pacific Northwest. She lived her life as a biological male until she was 69. Taking one to feel good and one just to feel all. My transition took a long time. It was a lifetime. And it's one to feel good and one to feel better. And it's one for your eyes when you wear your red letter. And there's one too many people who wander there. Taking one to feel good And one just to feel okay When I was younger, in the summertime, I'd steal one of my sister's dresses and I'd sneak back in the woods and try it on. Well, I was getting in the mom's dresser drawer and getting into her uh, under her clothes and stuff like that. and. Wearing them while Dad was at work, and I, I just really, it just really made me feel great, you know. But I'd feel so guilty afterwards. I couldn't, I couldn't understand. I, I would get pleasures like you wouldn't believe. I didn't know what was wrong with me. My parents, they began to pick up on it too. I just kept stealing, stealing my sister's clothes, clothes, and sneaking off with them, and. Finally, Mom actually put a, uh, put some kind of a, a silky, a slick dress in my closet for me to play with. And, you know, I guess she figured, well, that would keep, keep, keep him away from my uh, Marie's clothes, you know. And so every once in a while, I'd get it out and put it on and wear it, you know, when I was by myself. I used to love to look at the Sears catalog, especially where all the brassieres and stuff like that were, you know. And uh, anyway, I saw a part in the Sears catalog there where, where you could send for these um, breast enhancers. You know, they're a little uh, sh shaped just right, and uh, 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 they, they went in to kind of help lift your breast a little bit. And for a young kid, I was able to figure out everybody's schedule and that kind of thing, you know. And so I sent off to Sears, mailed it off. And then I watched the mail, and I was making, I made darn good sure that I was out there trying to get that mail first thing before everybody was out there. And my package came, and I got it without anybody knowing, you know, because I wanted it that bad. And then I, of course, I played with my breast enhancers for quite a little while. And then when Mom discovered them, she couldn't figure out how the heck I got them. <laughs> Thank you. 
mom was my supporter, not dad. The things that I remember the most about, about my dad is he had a vicious temper. And when I was in the third grade, he grabbed me by my left wrist where I could not get, aw get away. He yarded his belt off, doubled it, and just beat the living hell out of me. And uh, mom, mom never come out, never said a thing, and I was screaming. Later on, he did it again. He blew his top and beat the hell out of me. Then a third time come up, and this time I didn't stick around. I kept running, I wouldn't stop. Something like that, you, you don't forget it, you know. It, it stays there forever. I've got this hurt and pain tucked into a back part of my brain and it stays there all the time. It stays there and it never raises this ugly head. It, and, he, and I said, that's the way I deal with it. So, you know, it, it's, it's not a memory that, that I really cherish. I didn't feel like I was uh, really part of the family. My sister was my mother's special kid. My brother was my, my father's special kid. I was nobody. There was no, uh, no information out there for anybody. They were confused as, as well as I was. Didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I was too afraid to get too, clo too close to anybody. I had very few friends in school. I was hearing some of this talk from some of the other students trying to uh, insult me or hurt my feelings or something like that. There was one kid in school and uh, he was uh, a bully. And I remember one time while I was, I was uh, in, in the locker room, you know, having PE sitting there on the bench there and nobody was around. He walked up and he just punched me in the stomach just as hard as he could. Just, he's just nasty. I didn't let out a sound, you know, but it hurt. And those kind of memories you don't forget. I started getting into fights. I wasn't a very good fighter and they could beat the crap out of me very easily. So where does it come from? It had to come from my dad. You know, I was gonna make damn good and sure that those kids weren't gonna be stinkers to me. Well. The kids were just being kids, you know, and I didn't know that. I didn't understand it. There was two girls in my class that that were very nice to me. One was Maureen and the other one was Sherry. They always treated me with respect. I was trying to make up my mind whether I wanted to be called Maureen or Sherry. And I rolled the names back and forth and did not find any. Figured to myself, well, Sherry is a good son. I think that's that's a good name. But I never did tell Sherry. I would like to. We had this one uh, school reunion I was going to go to, and Sherry and Maureen at that time were were doing all the the organization and stuff like that. And then finally Maureen wrote me and says, well, maybe it wouldn't be a good idea for you to come down here because there are some people that, that are getting upset about this. So, you know, that was in the communication. I never wanted to go back, you know, because, you know, you know, there's too many hurts there. Hurts from my past family and hurts from school, you know, there's just too many things that, that, that was bad that I wanted nothing to do with. When I finally got on my own, I must have been about 20 years old, you know, I moved into a little cabin and then I started collecting up these girls' clothes so I could wear them in the cabin there. And it, it really made me feel good. I really liked, liked it, you know. But I, I was so afraid of getting caught. I worked in the, as a welder and a steel fabricator with the guys and I couldn't take Sherry to work because I knew I would lose my job. You know, it's just like picking on a kid in, in high school. I left some, some of my uh, tools at, at work, and this guy lived 
here in the area, and he come into my driveway. He knew where I lived, and I was in a, in a dress. And I run out there to see what was going on in a dress. Well, he, as soon as he got to work, well, he told everybody. He went around and spread the whole story all over the darn plant. After that, well, it was dog shit. I got laid off. You know, that kind of stuff was going on. And it, it's frustrating. Yeah, I've had, I've had a lot of problems with the work. I had to go through a series of steps from Les to Sherry, and it was it, it took a long time. And I was considering surgery at that point, but I was afraid of the pain. I did a lot of research. I had it all down on paper, and I went into the credit union there, and I sat down with uh, my loan officer, and I told him what I wanted to do and I laid out everything I said in the USA it will cost me $30,000. I can go to uh, Canada and get it done for $14,000 and I says I can go to, to Bangkok and get it done that's the my breast and the lower part for a total of $8,500 and I says this is where I'm gonna go because it's the best buy. I wasn't nervous I was just excited yeah because by then I knew what I needed. I had to lay there naked because they were taking measurements to my penis because the penis skin is turned inside and that becomes my vagina. And the penis you know, is going to have a little bit of hair follicles on it and they have some kind of a method of getting rid of that. He did both down here and then my breast all at one time and when I woke up, well, I was all done. I was satisfied. I knew that I'd done, done the right thing. I wasn't overly enjoyed, but I wasn't, I wasn't unhappy either, you know, just, I was just there. <laughs> I can't explain it. I don't know, I didn't, didn't seem like there was any different other than the fact that I just felt like I was, uh, uh, I can't say that I was in the right body because I've been in the same body forever and ever. You know, and a lot of a lot of people use that metaphor, but but that's that's kind of a false metaphor as far as I'm concerned. I just I just felt that hey, I did the right thing. Let's uh, so we're good. But a lot of my a lot of my uh, transgender friends use the term I'm uh, I'm in the wrong body or I'm in the right body kind of thing, and I don't that doesn't make sense to me because I still got the same body. <laughs> I went into the courts here and I filled out the proper papers to change my name from Sherry to, from Les to Sherry Catherine. But now I've got a next door neighbor, he refuses to call me Sherry, it's always Les. I don't like it. It's actually to me it's kind of stupid, you know, that a person wants to dig their heels in that badly. It's, it's really, show, it shows her ignorance. I've been square dancing for 38 years, <laughs> and I love every bit of it. And I do believe that the square dancing and the people I was interacting with was my savior. And that's why I keep saying that square dancing is my religion. I cannot even start to explain the wonderful feelings that those people gave me at that, that, that I was a well worth worthy person. The square dancers, they, they treated me with respect like you wouldn't believe. Treating me like, like I was a good person, the respect that I've never gotten from my father. Uh, 
and you know, I couldn't couldn't get get enough of it. Four hands around you to the right hand. It was just something that I couldn't explain, but after I had my surgery, I wanted to do this more than anything else. At first, some of the guys were feeling a little uneasy about me. I come back there for about a month, and then I dropped out because I was scared. And then the next month, when I finally did come back, well, it got a little easier. Over time, it got to the point where the, everybody got used to me. I knew the girls part quite well because I had been square dancing and a, a gay square dancer. I was at a point where I didn't want to know the man's part anymore because I wanted to be a girl so badly. I was living full time as Sherry. I didn't want to do the man's part, not ever once. I felt that I was a straight girl. I, I wasn't gay. And uh, that's why I wanted to be with the straight people because I transitioned from, transitioned from a straight guy to a straight girl. It wasn't until after I had my surgery that I really wanted to know what it was like to, to date a guy. And then after I dated a guy for a while, I really liked it. It was good. But up until that time, yeah, I, I liked, I was still a heterosexual because I, I like girls. That's how it is. But after I had my surgery, the difference was that I didn't have to worry about a guy reaching down and saying, uh oh, what the heck is this down here? I had a very sweet boyfriend for a while and I got involved with Sonny because I wanted to find out if, if I was uh, uh, attracted to girls or guys. And I found out that I really liked the guy quite a bit. I had met Sonny before my surgery, he took an interest in me there because, you know, when I get out and dance, well, I do a lot of skirt work. I love the skirt work. But I didn't want to, I was afraid to get getting too close to him at that, that time because I still had male parts. But, you know, I kind of liked him a little bit, you know. So anyway, when I went up this time, well, I was all female, and there was Sonny sitting there, you know. So he got me out and started dancing with me, and and then he, he would ask me to go to the restaurant afterwards so we could sit and have coffee and talk. He was just a uh, nice farm boy. He didn't have all the hang-ups that, that I have to put up with a lot of other people. I was nervous and scared because I couldn't tell Sonny that I used to be a guy because I knew, but it didn't take me long to pick up that, that uh, Sonny, uh, there were some things there that, that he, he would not be able to accept. He was, he was taught as a, a young a child and a young man when he lived, lived in Oklahoma by his father to hate blacks and Hispanics. When he was in the service, he was in the, sur uh, in the Navy for 22 years, he was taught to uh, hate gay people. And uh, he couldn't get rid of it. I worried about it, but yet uh, I wanted this experience to be with him. I slept with him and, and uh, I did things that girls like to do to guys. I did uh, one time go down on him because I wanted to please him. And he had that look on his face of, oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> it, was, it was cute. I was feeling kind of uncomfortable about it, you know, but I wanted to do it to him because I wanted to do something that a girl does, you know. I felt very good about it. I, I can't explain exactly, you know, but but I, I yeah, I really did feel good that, to know that, that I'm a straight woman. I knew that if I told Sonny that I used to be a man, he would just kick me out of the door right then and there. So I couldn't tell him. And I was wanting very much to find out what it's like to be a woman, you know, with a guy. And it was a nice experience. I, I, I really enjoyed it. We did get broke up. I guess somebody said something to somebody else, and somebody else said something to somebody else. 
I was saying uh, that Sonny's dating a man or something like that. He was angry. He was. He wouldn't look at me, and then he went off and left me. My boyfriend went off and left me. There was a couple of times that I did see him again at at at, at a couple of dances. I went up to her, and, and he was feeling indifferent. He didn't know what to think. It, it really hurt him very deeply. You're, you're getting the picture of me being a guy and a woman at the same time. I'll probably have to have whiskers for the rest of my life, whether I like it or not, but that's just life. You learn to live with what you got. I got this letter from, from my doctor. To whom it may concern, Miss Sherry, born July 24th, 1939, as a male child, has been diagnosed by a team of medical professionals with gender identity disorder. On January 26, 2006, I have completed sex reassignment surgery, male to female, for this patient at the Vibra Ram Hospital, Bangkok, Thailand. The surgery was consisted of the removal of the testicles and the removal of the penis shaft. And he did labia plastic. Well, that would be for the labia, the labia minor and uh, majors. And then he done the breast augmentation surgery with 350 cc's of silicon implants. For medical and legal reasons, she is now an infertile female since her gender has been permanently changed to female because of sex reassignment surgery. Yours truly, Dr. Chetok, certified plastic and reconstruction surgery surgeon, Bangkok, Thailand. My transition is a lifetime because it's been a lifetime experience of little changes going along, you know, and there's a lifetime journey there that's going on. I will still be doing little things along the way that, you know, that'll, that'll make me uh, feel more feminine. I don't know what it is. The hardest thing when I was younger is learning to like myself. Once I got over that part of it, then life got a little easier. But, you know, there's people that never learn to like themselves all through their whole life. And that's really sad. It did just come down to the wire that I've got to be who I am and feel good about it. That's, 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 that's the... The, the jewel of the whole thing. And if you see me, don't close your eyes. And if you see me, you will realize that I'm more than just a little bit less.
Sun turns into light, turns into day, turns into night, and then I'm gone. Sadly sinking in the setting sun, turns into light, turns into day, turns into night, and then I'm gone. Sadly sinking in the setting sun, turns into light, turns into day, turns into night, and then I'm gone. Sad.